Hello everyone, I am Renown Zero, back again talking about the Red Cross, calling on gamers to abide by real world rules of war while they're playing first person shooters. Yeah, because, you know, abide by the real world when you're playing a fictional game. You're playing a video game, apparently. So we'll jump into this article from Bounding in the Comics. In one of the most out-of-touch attempts in recent memory of spreading awareness of the realities of war, the International Committee of the Red Cross has called on first-person shooter players to follow the real-world rules of war when answering the call of duty on their respective digital battlefields. Every day, people play games set in conflict zones right from their couch, reads the official website for the ICRC's Play by the Rules campaign. But right now, armed conflicts are more prevalent than ever, the organization continues. And to the people suffering from their effects, their com this conflict is not a game. Well, first-person shooters are a video game, so... It destroys lives and leaves communities devastated. Therefore, we're challenging you to play the FPS by the real rules of war. Why would I play a fictional game by the real rules of war? That makes no sense. To show everyone that even wars have rules. Rules which protect humanity on battlefields IRL. So, protect the real world by playing your fake game by the real world? I guess. Composed of various treaties, laws, and charters adopted over human history, such as the Hodge Convention of 1907 and the modern era Geneva Conventions, the rules of war generally seek to strike at a humanitarian balance between weakening the enemy and limiting suffering. To this end, the ICRC recommends four specific rules, all of which are found in the aforementioned Geneva Conventions for players to follow during games, including no thirsting. When an enemy is down and can't respond, you can't keep shooting at them. Based on the convention's Article 13, which states prisoners of war must at all times be protected, particularly against acts of violence or intimidation against insults and public curiosity. No, when they're down, they're down, and they're down and out. Especially in war zone. When they're down, you get rid of them. No targeting nonviolent NPCs. That's the most fun part. Bots that don't fire unprovoked are considered civilians, and you can't target or harm them. Yes, you can. It's a video game. It's not hurting real people. Based on additional protocol 2, article 13, which states the civilian population as such as well as individual civilians shall not be the object of attack. Acts or threats of violence, the primary purpose of which is to spread terror among the civilian population are prohibited unless and for such time as they take a direct part in hostilities. No targeting civilian buildings. Well, I mean, a bad guy could be in that civilian building. In any given game map, houses, schools, or hospitals are considered safe zones that you cannot harm. When fighting in these spaces, you must do everything you can to avoid damage. This just sounds dumb. Based on the 1977 District Protocol, which states, Places or areas designated for the sole protection of civilians, such as hospital zones or similar refugees, should not be the object of military operations. Use med kits on everyone. No. If you have an unused med kit that works on others, you should must give it to those who need it be they friendly or enemy. No, that's not how video games work. You typically want to win and you want to heal your teammates, sure, but not the enemy. That's dumb. Plus, you can't do that anyway. Based on Geneva Convention 2, Article 12, which states, members of the armed forces and other persons mentioned in the following article who are wounded or sick shall be respected and protected in all circumstances. They shall be treated, be treated humanely and cared for by the party to the conflict in whose power they may be without any adverse to distinction founded on sex, race, nationality, religion, political opinions, or any other similar criteria. In promotion of this campaign, the ICRC partnered with five streamers, most likely all leftists, to host a six-hour Twitch livestream on April 15th wherein they each played by the rules in different games, PUBG, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and Escape from Tarkov, respectively. I don't know how you can follow the rules in Fortnite when it's a kiddie game that has no real-world characters and... No real bad things going on besides, you know, shooting people. And it's all kitty. Further, the RCRC created a custom Fortnite island named after the campaign and invited players to learn to follow real rules of war in the competitive mode. I think all five of these streamers are dumb. Honestly, they're, they're really, really dumb. The Play by the Rules website lists Arma 3 and the more specifically its Laws of, Laws of War DLC as one of the campaign's participating titles. I don't know why why they'd even have a DLC for a type of game that is super realistic as far as war. And again, it's a video game. It's not harming real people. 
However, it should be noted that this content was made and released in 2017 for a separate ICRC fundraiser, which ultimately raised and donated a total of 176,667 to the organization. In a statement provided to Fox News Digital, ICRC spokesperson Christopher Hanger explained that the organization's goal with the campaign was not to strip down the joy and fun of playing first-person shooter games. Yes, it was. It was 100%. It was 100% the purpose of it. You're taking something that's fictional and trying to make it like real life. The reason we play in the digital world is because it doesn't harm people in the physical world. Better to do that than do it in the real world. But rather to collaborate hand in hand with the community to have a tangible and meaningful outcome for IHL as a common good for humanity. Wow. Again, this is dumb. Quote, this does not mean that we want to in any way force the industry or players to incorporate the laws of war into video games. Yes, you do. You want you want to suck the fun out of literally anything you can, you fucking commies. But rather to start having exchanges about how these laws are designed to protect each and every one of us in a situation of armed conflict, he asserted. So essentially, coming for your video games, just like they try to come for your movies, your TV, your music, and all that. Closing out in his statement... Hanger ultimately clarified that real-life armed conflict and its humanitarian consequences are and will always be the ICRC's main concern. So yeah, your main concern shouldn't be fictional video games. Your your main concern should be real life real life consequences of war, not some fictional digital pixels being assimilated or just killed or destroyed. What's wrong with these people? And I'm gonna say it again: the five streamers that are here are all morons. Every single one of them are morons for doing this. Y'all y'all are really some stupid fucking clowns out here. Acting like you should follow real life rules when you're playing in a fictional digital world with pixels. How fucking stupid is that? It's the most dumb, dumbest, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god. So, Red Cross coming for your video games just like... Hollywood comes for your favorite franchises, your favorite music, your favorite series, and all that stuff. It just sounds very draconian and very commie-like. So essentially now trying to suck the fun out of even playing video games. Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, remaining, uh, returning subscribers, new viewers, and returning viewers. If you do like the video, hit the like button. Comment below what your feelings about all this are. Subscribe for more content. Hit the bell for notifications. Set it to all. That way you get notifications anytime I post a new video. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace.